these meetings are, are very real. We are facing a, a budget deficit this year. We have to decide what it is we are going to cut, what we are going to keep, um, and please rest assured that these meetings do mean something. We take the information and the input that you guys have and we take it back to City Hall and we do our very, very best to execute uh, the guidance and direction you've given us here. I want to thank all of you for coming out. It means a great deal to us. I always say the moment that you leave it up to the politicians to make sure things happen right is a, is a moment it all goes to hell. So thank you so much for, for coming and spending your evening with us. Um, we're going to show you a short video, talk about the budget, uh, and then give you guys a chance to really let us know your feelings about what we are and aren't doing right, what we could be doing better, and things that we can do away with, or places where you would like to see some growth or uh, some contraction. Uh, to get us started, I'm going to introduce one of our newest uh, assistant city managers. She's sort of like the number one draft pick around here. Her name is Gloria Hurtado, and she'll start us off. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Councilman. Okay, just a little bit about the process, and then we'll get the, the video started. We actually did a round of budget hearings um, before we actually put this draft budget together. So we took the input that we received in those hearings, and they had input, or they did impact the draft budget that we put together. Um, the process here is this is a draft budget. These little blue forms are a draft budget. We want your input, and that's what all these hearings are doing, so we're going to ask you to, to do some hard work because we're going to ask you to look at what are some areas we might cut or reduce or increase fees, and then we're going to ask you for your priorities of what you want to keep or increase. Um, we will take all of the information that's provided at all of these hearings, and the council members will get a summary of this. We'll also have two citywide hearings at the um, council chambers. They're listed in this little blue book also. So um, we'll go ahead and run the video, and then we'll give you instructions again, and we'll spend about 20, 30 minutes for you working at your tables. Um, we have a city staffer at each table to help facilitate the process and be the note taker, but we really want to hear from the citizens, so it's not hearing from your city staffer, it's hearing from the citizens. And then when we do the report out, we're going to ask um, for a volunteer at each table to do the report out. Let me um, first introduce our city staff. Um, also on the executive team, David Ellison is here. I saw him someplace. Oh, there he is. David's here. We also have a number of department heads or assistant department heads that are facilitating at the tables. So let me introduce those, and I'll start way down here. David McCary. David McCary is our public works. Solid waste, I'm sorry. Solid waste. <laughs> He's the trash man. <laughs> Great. <laughs> hey, thank you. I'm Joe Angelo, the Chief HR Officer for the city. Carl Weidage, I'm Deputy Chief with the Fire Department. Melody Woosley, Interim Director, Human Services. Vincent Medley, Assistant Director, Animal Care Services. Razi Hossein, Assistant Director, Sims Department. Art Reinhardt, Assistant Director, Public Works. Roy Waldhelm, Deputy Chief, Police Department. Great. And also we have um, Maria Vila Gomez, who is our um, budget director. So she works really hard on putting all this together. We have a number of staff from the budget office. So if you guys want to wave your hand, they, they've been working hard for the last for the entire summer. And I see our deputy city manager Eric Walsh has walked in. Hey, Eric. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and run the video, and then we'll get started on the work. Who else?
Hello, I'm City Manager Cheryl Scully. The fiscal year 2014 proposed budget is balanced and allows the city to continue to provide quality services to the community while making the tough decisions to keep the city financially sound. The fiscal year 2014 proposed budget focuses on reducing administrative costs and prioritizes public safety, street maintenance, sidewalks, and drainage improvements. The proposed budget reflects policy direction from Mayor Castro, City Council members, and valuable input from the recent community budget hearings held in June of every quadrant of the city. This video was developed to provide a summary of the fiscal year 2014 proposed budget and to enhance understanding of city services and how they're financed. It also highlights areas where the city has been able to recommend budget cuts while maintaining quality service levels to meet community needs. Over the next few weeks, the City Council will carefully consider the proposals included in the proposed budget. Mayor Castro, City Council members, and I look forward to your input prior to the adoption of the City's budget on September 12, 2013. We appreciate your interest in the City of San Antonio's proposed fiscal year 2014 budget. We are committed to keeping San Antonio financially strong and to making San Antonio a dynamic and healthy community for you and your family. The City is committed to continually improving services for residents of San Antonio and nurturing an environment for future growth and prosperity. Each day, the city's workforce is in the community, working to maintain city streets, protect you and your family, preserve the beauty and integrity of your neighborhoods, and offer services and programs that can enrich the quality of life for all residents. The fiscal year 2014 proposed budget is balanced as required by law and does not include a city property tax rate increase. The general fund, which is the city's largest operating fund, totals 989 million, less than 1% higher than last year. The budget is transparent and reflects City Council policy direction and valuable input from the community. In June of this year, five community budget hearings were held across the city to obtain service priorities from residents before the proposed budget was prepared. Following the community budget hearings, City Council annually establishes priorities and the proposed budget recommendations reflect that input. This year, the high priority services identified are public safety, streets, sidewalks and drainage as our city core services. Your city budget is more efficient and since 2007, the city has reduced the general fund budget by nearly 88 million and has eliminated 1,633 civilian positions with no layoffs. During the same period, the city added 307 police officers and 167 firefighters, reflecting community and city council priorities. The FY 2014 proposed budget reduces 13 million in the general fund and a total of 279 positions in all funds. In the general fund five-year financial forecast presented in May of 2013, Revenues were projected to increase at a slower pace than expenditures, necessitating adjustments to be made to the budget. The proposed FY 2014 budget presented to the City Council on August 8th is balanced and reflects the City Council priorities of no city property tax rate increase, budget reductions, and some fee increases. Included in the budget are $5 million in proposed revenue adjustments in the general fund, primarily in EMS transport fees, hazmat inspection fees, and recreational fees. The proposed budget also maintains the city's financial reserves at $89 million, or 9% of general fund appropriations. With the efficiencies added in this year's proposed budget, general fund expenses increased less than 1%. One of the top priorities recommended by the community and the City Council is public safety. The Police Department has applied for a Communities Organized for Public Service hiring grant that will allow for the hiring of additional police officers for three years. The budget includes $307,000 for a city match if the grant is awarded in October 2013 for 10 officers. $1.3 million is also included in the budget to add more police in-car video and other equipment. The fire department provides quality fire prevention and suppression, emergency medical service, and rescue operations to city residents. 
The proposed budget enhances these efforts by adding three full-time hazmat inspectors to improve inspections, as well as $3 million for the replacement of two hazmat trucks and other fire equipment. Improvement and maintenance of streets and sidewalks continues to be a high priority for residents. The proposed budget continues funding the Infrastructure Maintenance Program at $54 million. This amount includes $35 million to improve streets and $8.5 million for sidewalks. This is $2.5 million more than in 2013, and 4.5 of the $8.5 million will go to improve sidewalks to schools. $3.5 million will be used for drainage improvements, and the final $7 million is for pavement markings, alleyways, traffic signals, and bike facility improvements. In 2012, voters approved a $596 million bond program that includes city-wide improvements for streets, bridges, and sidewalks, drainage and flood control, parks, libraries, and public safety facilities. During fiscal year 2014, many of these projects will be designed and approximately half will begin construction. The FY 2014 budget includes $1.25 million for initiatives to revitalize and improve neighborhoods throughout San Antonio. This amount includes the Renew SA program, Ciclovia, and the Fit Pass program. Also included is funding for animal care services to continue to perform 26,500 spay-neuter surgeries and maintain a 75% live release rate. Code continues to be a priority in 2014, and no service reductions for code enforcement are recommended in the budget to ensure a continued focus on improving neighborhoods. San Antonio Senior Centers provide daily health, fitness, and nutrition support to residents 60 years and older. The FY 2014 budget continues to make these services a priority and includes $1.5 million in funding for the expansion of senior centers in Districts 2, 6, and 7. The 2014 proposed budget includes $3.5 million for economic development incentives, $1.75 million is dedicated for inner city incentives, and $1.75 million is dedicated to citywide initiatives. A key piece in developing the city's budget is making decisions to maintain a strong financial position while providing quality service delivery. The budget reduces $13 million by streamlining services, focusing on community priorities and reducing administrative overhead. On average, non-public safety departments in the general fund reduced costs by 5%. This year's budget reductions include leveraging technology and process improvements in municipal court to reduce the time customers spend at court by 30%, while reducing costs by 914000 The budget also reduces $1.7 million in administrative overhead, which includes a 50% reduction to travel and other line item budgets, as well as 11 administrative positions. The city will also achieve savings by transitioning services provided at the link centers to existing facilities, including Development Services One Stop, select libraries, and other city facilities. Service modifications totaling $1.3 million include realignment of parks landscape and sanitation maintenance schedules and consolidating 10 open play community centers with low attendance with other full service centers in close proximity. The budget includes a change in the outdoor swimming pool program that is anticipated to save $310,000. This proposal expands the existing six-day-per-week operation of outdoor swimming pools to a seven-day-per-week operation by limiting the number of days each pool is open. Delegate agency funding is proposed to be reduced by 5%, consistent with the average reduction of non-public safety city departments. Funding for Haven for Hope, however, remains at the FY 2013 budget levels. This proposal saves $630,000. Solid waste collection services are supported by a user fee collected monthly through your electric bill. The budget includes funding to support a subscription curbside recycling program for organic recycling and adding two additional neighborhood drop-off collection centers. An increase to the solid waste monthly rate of 50 cents is recommended in the 2014 proposed budget, raising the cost to $19.93 per month. Now that you've learned about the proposed fiscal year 2014 budget, we want to hear from you. We encourage you to attend any of the community budget hearings 
There are five area-wide community meetings held across the city and two at the city council chambers. As required by law, the city budget is scheduled to be adopted on September 12th. The city's new fiscal year begins October 1st. Visit the city's website at www.sanantonio.gov to learn more about the proposed fiscal year 2014 budget and the public input process. You can watch this video again on TVSA, the city's government access channel. As you can see, the city's fiscal year 2014 proposed budget is balanced and continues to provide the community with high quality services and a strong financial position. Okay, so now we're gonna start the hard work. Um, so what we want you to focus on first is three areas that you would like to um, reduce, cut in the city budget, or um, fees that you think we, or other ways to raise revenues. So those three first, and we ask that you come to some kind of consensus on your tables, and then focus on the priority areas that you would like to uh, maintain or increase any of those service areas. And staff is available to answer questions, and we have facilitators at each of your tables. We'll spend about 20 minutes doing this, and then we'll give you a five-minute warning to kind of wrap up. Okay, we're, I think we're ready to start. And actually, Table 10 has volunteered to go first. And table one has volunteered to go last. <laughs> so we're going to start with table 10. OK. Um, our first item for reducing is the streetcar project. And we, we're not quite sure we understand how it falls in the budget, but we do understand that there are some funds in the budget for it. Um, the next was the tax incentive program that uh, one of the uh, one of my partners said that we don't have to give the the city away. That like people should pay us to come to San Antonio because it's so wonderful and we have such a great economic development. Um, and then this was another table partner that really had wanted to review the pay equity between the city staff. So um, of course, libraries are should be first on everybody's list for keeping. And uh, along with the library funding comes the book festival funding. So if you all don't know about the book festival, it's a fabulous event that goes on downtown at the Central Library and the Southwest School of Art. So, um, and that's gonna be April 5th next year, so put it in your calendar. So it is a great economic uh, generator. It's all about quality of life, like libraries are. Back to libraries, bookmobile. Don't get rid of those bookmobiles, please. And ours. Libraries need to be top priority in this budget, no matter what. We have a quality of life. People come to San Antonio for that, so um, that's my spiel there. And then senior citizens, one of my partners was worried about planning for the future and the programming, including arts and cultural events with senior, citizen, senior centers. Um, and then right here we have funding for the, uh, Hike and bike trails, which kind of goes down here with the park funding, because we, you know, this quality of life again with mind, body, spirit, and keeping everyone healthy mentally and physically. And then the no animal kill, um, you had a, a, we wanted to increase that number, the percentage of no animal kill. So that's number 10. All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Who's next? Right here. Table three. Hello. We here at table number three. We we had a we had several things and we decided to cut some of our cuts. Um, first on the list was we thought about combining certain departments. We thought about maybe combining Sims and uh, Public Works. Then we also have. Um, county city consolidations with the other municipalities that we have. Maybe that will, hope, maybe, maybe. Um, we have also 
bulk and brush pickup that we have cut. <laughs> yeah. Can I can I ask a question about the just so I understand what sure. you mean? Sure. In, in terms of cutting bulk and uh, brush pickup, could you explain a little more what the sense of the table was? Betty. Yeah, I can explain it. All right. Sure. Miss I can explain it real easy. Seniors can't pull out uh, sofas and mattresses and so forth. And what's happening, nor can they go out and cut trees and put them in, in their front yards and so forth. So every time we have a bulky pickup, San Antonio looks awful. Everybody has an old mattress and an old sofa that they pull out in historic neighborhoods. So if we cut out the bulky pickup and made the people responsible for their own pickups of the bulky items. In other words, they pay solid waste for this pickup. Call in, make an appointment. Same thing with trees. Seniors can't go out and cut their trees and pull brush and things and put them in their front yard. So we need to cut that out. Let them call in, let them make an appointment and get their brush and their whatever they want picked up, pick up. That will save solid waste. We'll have a cleaner city. Our right now, Commissioner Atkinson is working on the county. He's got a big problem. They won't clean it up. So if we did this, we'll have a cleaner San Antonio. It'll be more beautiful. Thank you, Ms. Secretary. Yeah, so maybe some common... Uh bringing in some senior services into that aspect and also with the code enforcement with combined with the our other suggestion might help with that. Um, for our priorities, uh, we have of course public safety up at the top of our list. Um, we also talked about increasing the property rate tax to, to maybe except for seniors. Because um, it just seems like we that's one way to, to instantly get money for us so that we don't have to cut anything. We really did not want to do any cuts. So <laughs> we wanted to put that on our list. Um, we have also wanted to save the library. And with SIPA was mentioned, and also the Texana specifically were mentioned. Um, park maintenance and operations equity. We would like to, to see more equal services for all of the parks in the city. Um, and, and to be clear by that, do you mean, explain that a little bit. You can, look, we're all friends here. She right, can, yes. She can, she can <laughs> well, speak freely, right? Just, the, somebody at our table was mentioning how she went to one park and it was dark, and she went to another park and there was light for all of the, the citizens in that park. And she, and it was, it's unequal, the maintenance and operations and some of the. Right, not all parks are treated equally. All right. Um, economic development and maybe rounding up the garbage fee because y'all are already rounding it. Yeah, from, from 1993 to 95, and then somebody said, just go ahead and make it 20. All right. <laughs> By the end of the night, I'm going to figure out how much money that makes us. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, who's next? Right over here. Okay. decreases we had a divided table so as I give these uh, th these uh, results remember that <laughs> uh, some members of our table felt that the proposed uh, sexual rights ordinance uh, was something the city could not afford to take on because the uh, legal fees associated with defending it would prove to be very expensive it's not the idea of this minute. It's the idea of what's going to happen down in the few, down in the All down right. the line. All right. So we'll cut civil rights. Got we it. were split. Next. We were we were split. Okay. We Next were split. One. The second thing, and we were split on this too, was to uh, defund uh, the cultural arts department and its delegate agencies uh, on the grounds that this was not necessarily a, a good use of the money that the funds could be used otherwise but again this was split okay. uh, now 
Now what we agree on. Now what we agree on. Okay, now we're over the splits. Forget splits. Now we're into what we agree on. Um, we agreed that the streetcar program was a good place to save some money, that that uh, was something that we could save some money on. Uh, we also agreed that as far as the police and fire is concerned, that the city manager has a good point in that we are heading for a dangerous position where we're going to find ourselves overspending on this area, especially when you consider the uh, deals that our firefighters and policemen have gotten in such things as retirement, <laughs> which could in the future be quite expensive to the city. Over and overtime, and overtime, thank you. She's very good in letting me know about over. I, I appreciate that. Uh, and overtime, that there seems to be a lot of things about police and police overtime that could get quite costly. Uh, the we also agreed that on downtown development that we are putting money into something that maybe we shouldn't be putting money into. For example, we're granting 15 year tax exempt abatements to people who are building luxury apartments that most San Antonians can't afford to rent or buy. Why are we giving the developers that kind of money? Uh, uh, we all, now, the idea is that, you know, that's, that's, that's just a very poor use of, of our money. <laughs> uh, we also agreed that as far as we have, in, uh, we have a generic thing here. Uh, it's written up as utility and garbage fees, but we also have CPS and saws. The idea is that the citizens are being hit with fees that, in the sense of rate increases, that really are, are not warranted. It's a, a wish list on the part of the, those departments, but it doesn't really jive with the reality of, uh, of, the, of this world. Uh, but, you know, it's a way for them to get money for certain things that they want, <laughs> so to speak but you know, not fair to the consumer. Now, as far as what we felt should be maintained, and I'm gonna give a little bit of explanation on this, we felt that the library was very central to the well-being of the city, and that there were proposals that had been made that were not exactly in keeping with the role of the library. For example, the library is a place that many people go to who don't have air conditioning. It also provides a spot off the street so people can be safe. So the idea of closing the library to save money is, <laughs> there's a question here about, uh, you want to save a buck and then you want to have someone not be safe or not be in a healthy environment. Plus the fact that there are a lot of people who use the various services of the libraries, for example, uh, you have people who don't have access to computers who use the library computers. Not everyone has a home computer. Uh, but the library has it for the public. We also had, uh, and we also did discuss too that the library has extensive cultural programs that bring culture to the community at no cost, you know, very, for free, basically, for the public, you know. Not everyone can afford to go out and buy a ticket. <laughs> so the library is a cultural site as well. Uh, so we said, let's maintain the library, no cuts. Now, we also did say on the parks, and we have down here on, on, on the sheet, maintain, that uh, there's two sides to the parks. Uh, we. There's the issue of maintaining uh, park hours, for example. There's a lot of talk about reducing the number of swimming pools that would be open, and that would in turn uh, adversely affect access to the swimming pools for people who needed to swim. And then you also get into the issue of maintenance of the parks. I don't know if any of the other tables are gonna bring that one up or not, but the idea being like, I think one of the tables said that uh, one park was uh, nice and bright and the other park was dark. It, why, why, why is one park dark and why is one park light? You know, so in other words, it, we, we, we shouldn't go, in other words, that parks are an important part of our community and every, 
every neighborhood that has a park should really have, what do you call it, equal quality parks. Sure. Well, that, that's what we came up with. All right. Thank you guys very much. I got, a, I got a quick hand over here for table five. Good evening, everybody. Okay. What we decided is that, hi there. What we decided is the cuts that we would like to see are tax abatements. Yes, special tax abatement. We would also like to see equal cuts for Haven for Hope. If you're gonna cut the delegate agencies, cut Haven for Hope too, it's not fair. Um, cut the supplemental funds of special events like Fiesta and the Alamo Dome like supplemental events, or yeah, supplemental special events. Okay, the city services that we would like to keep or increase, um, there is CRT's crisis response staff at the police departments that handle domestic violence, and we wanna make sure that that does not go away, and right now I think they're getting ready to cut them by 10, and there's only 20, so that's not good. Domestic violence is very serious. Um, we would, and this, grows right in line with keeping the human services. There's also a 5% proposed cut to delegate agencies. I'm with one of those delegate agencies, Dress for Success. Our services, our, our, the number of services that we are providing, actually our clients have increased and we're, they're getting ready to go up again and they're talking about cutting the money to do that. We really need more money, but we're just trying not to be greedy. Okay, just, but please maintain, okay, and not cut. And then equal funding for per capita for senior services and centers throughout the city. Okay, that, we, that can, was a big thing for can us. Can you, um, before we flip the page, yes. uh, can you help me understand that last bullet point better? The equal funding per capita for senior services? Yes. Okay, there are some senior services, like in the video it talked about adding some senior citizens in some of the districts, but for instance in District 1, I think there is no senior service, there's senior no, citizen There's, there's center? not one new senior center. So okay. some districts, for example, up north, they have a big sort of institutional senior center. We don't have that. We have a smaller s We just want it to be fair. Sites. All right. We want it to be fair. Okay. Okay. Equally spread out and that it, okay, because. And, and, let, me, and let me just say on that, um, and I want to make this clear, we could always do more, but in this proposed budget, there are no cuts to senior services or sites. Um, now, we could do more, but one of the things that has sort of like a platinum halo around it this year are senior services. Okay. All right. Um, but then, again, I really th we really want to get across the, word, the, the, the importance of human, se uh, services that serve human capital, because in reality, that is our greatest asset, folks, is, is our, our individuals, the people in this community. We're asking for no cuts, and I don't know that there's cuts planned for this, the police department and the fire department. We don't want to see cuts in that, in any kind of safety. Right. Uh, no cuts to parks, recreation, libraries, but we also don't want to see an increase. Okay, just maintain, just maintain. And then we actually, um, I want to propose something that I think has, uh, that maybe initially you might just go, oh my God, no, Pamela, no, 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 we can't do that. But I really want you to hear what I'm saying, what we've, what we've talked about over here. That we have not had an increase in property taxes for 20 years. But wait, y'all hold for a minute. Just hold for a minute, please. Okay, because so, it's a controversial issue, right? What we are proposing is that a 1.56 cents increase Okay, for the average homeowner, it would be $20 a year. It would not include seniors, right? Seniors right. would not be affected. I don't think low, low, low income people would be affected. That's right. People whose property value, I think, is valued under $55,000 are exempt from that. And okay. then seniors who have the homestead exemption are exempt from that. Is that about right? Okay. Okay, wait. Let me, let me just con let me continue because there's something that I really think is important. So the out-of-pocket cost for most of us would be about $20 a year, okay? But the benefit would be $11 million to this city. We could use that money and continue to invest in each other and to help the poor become tax-paying citizens so that our, our tax base goes up even more. All right, so I think she, thank you. Uh, before we go to the next table, I wanted to point out that I got the answer 
uh, from Maria about rounding up the, the garbage fee, uh, what, seven cents? And it would, it would result in about $289,000 a year, that roundup. <laughs> All right, you guys, who wants to go next? You guys? Okay. I'll stand by for you guys. Thank you. Um, sure, let's, let's make it quick, though. I don't, as long as we're not starting a debate, I think that's fine. All right, thank you for that. Uh, let's let's get the table four recommendations. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, sorry, I didn't write this bigger. <laughs> I didn't realize. <laughs> it's really important. I didn't realize. Yeah. Um, this was our first draft, but we didn't have time for another one. Okay, so our first reduction would be in the tax abatements, like others have said. Um, also, yay. Uh, we also agree about streetcars at our table. Not, I mean, this wasn't uniformly agreed upon, but um, code enforcement we felt could be uh, reduced. And then if the county city um, management was consolidated, maybe that would be a, a good reduction. Moving on to uh, what we really want to maintain, number one, libraries, um, especially no cuts to the hours and to the bookmobile, which is so incredibly important in terms of getting books in the hands of, of kids. Um, we want to maintain health, uh, senior citizens specifically. Uh, we also, uh, there was a big push at our table to uh, support uh, the public works, maintain streets, sidewalks, and that. And then the parks, number four. Questions? All right. Thank you very much. Who's next? Right here. All righty. We decided to cut in tax abatements, decrease uh, cities, cities uh, center, city development, and H Park, reduce executive staffing and reduce bonuses and incentives. Lower amount of pay increase for police department and fire department. No reductions to library services. Do not cut CRT positions. More sidewalks and curbs. No, no cuts in projected uh, project quests. And more neighborhood parks. No cuts to community pools. All right. Okay, those are good. Who's next? Ferris, your group. Okay. Uh, oh, okay, thank you. Ferris, who's in your group? I am the group. All right, that's what I thought. <laughs> I'm right. the A-team. But anyway. By, uh, by the way, guys, honestly, you know, we should give a hand to Ferris. He's someone who is involved in everything in the district. He comes to every meeting. He shows up at, at City Hall all the time. And I think that a lot of folks have a propensity to look at folks like Ferris and Jack as, as, as folks who um, are there for the fun of it or the sport of it. But I've come to believe over the past years that they're really here, even if we disagree on things, because they really, really care. So I, I really value the table of one that is Ferris. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the first thing, uh, all the Councilmen need to, uh, your assistants need to make more money. Y'all need to increase that. Don't let them hear that. They're right there. I know where they're at. I'm looking right at them. I don't know their name, though. <laughs> but no, right. seriously, uh, they work hard for their money. What and you work, you work the daylight side of them. I, I can tell you that. What, what, what about me? Well, yeah, uh, you need to get an increase, too. Yeah. I mean, you know. Extra bologna sandwich. All right. No, T-bone steak. All right. But in a way, the, uh, with the PD overtime, um, they need to cut that overtime for the police department. It is killing the city. And the way you can do it, uh, I would like for the, all the city council and the city manager to go to Selma, Texas. If you've ever been to Selma, Texas, you know what I mean. There was 12 trucks on the left side, 12 on the right side. One police car must have been the sergeant. They gave over, they probably gave about 100 tickets a day. And then they hauled their cars in. Uh, if the city police would do that, now they're doing it on, they're doing it on Calabria. They have four um, 
motorcycles giving tickets last week, and they did it out there. The sheriff's department is doing it out there on the other side of Bandera. And I think the city of San Antonio needs to do that. Uh, hire 50 more uh, policemen, and that would be their job to give tickets uh, all the time. That would save a lot of money. All right. And this friend of mine, he got a ticket. He had to pay $168. So 168 times 1,000, y'all wouldn't have the problems y'all having now. <laughs> Number two, uh, out in the Kenwood uh, Park, the lights are cut off at night. We have a, a gang problem out there. Those lights need to stay on every night. Uh, I want the, the Kenwood Community Center double the size what it is right today. Uh, we don't have enough space. We don't have enough restrooms or uh, anything. The, the sidewalk needs to be rebuilt and many other things. The next thing, the downtown area. Uh, we need more policemen in the downtown area. Uh, the lights in the downtown area are dull. Uh, the parks all over the city uh, need more park police in the, in the parks, uh, especially at nighttime because there's a lot of crime going on. Uh, the the po police department did clean up the downtown area with uh, people panhandling and the game bangers. They said that was their turf. The police said that was their turf, so they pushed them completely out of the downtown area. Now they're over there by Haven for Hope, about 200 people just over in that area by Haven for Hope. And uh, we don't want to shut down Haven for Hope. Somebody said shut it down. Now those, those people need to be fed. They need to be uh, school and, and, and clothes and stuff like that. We don't want to shut that down. And then the next thing is um, when we talk about the speeding tickets, uh, the police cars. I think the city is buying too many police cars every year and they don't need to buy them every year. They need to buy them every two or three years. Uh, that's where you would save a lot of money. The administration cars, they buy new ones every year. They don't need to do that. Uh, the park lights, well, we always talk about the park lights. Uh, more police for um, well, downtown, brighter street lights, em employees at 10% pay raise. And, Which one uh, is that one? What was the, the one about employees? Oh, the employees, 10% pay raise. Well, city employees get a 10% pay raise? Right. It's coincidentally at a table full of city employees? <laughs> well, well, you know, I think they deserve a 10% pay raise. Now, I know who's working and who's not working. I, I'm downtown at City Hall All right. five days a week. All right. And God bless Ferris's generous heart. All right, keep going. And then uh, just, one or, just one or two more things. Uh, we need to advertise uh, for people to be more courtesy. We're having a lot of DWIs in the city. It was over 500 wrecks uh, Christmas day or Christmas night. And I believe as the police department give enough tickets like Selma that the pay raise that, that they want now, uh, they, can, they can do it six months, they can double or triple the amount of, uh, of calls they give. And now I, I'm gonna say this here, this is a true story. If y'all go to, to Travis County, Austin, Texas, they got a helicopter up in the air. They have the sheriff department, they have the police department, they have the constables, they have the uh, patrol on both sides of the highway giving tickets. And why can't San Antonio do the same thing? All right. But anyway, uh, I want to say that our councilman is doing an outstanding job. Yay, yay. And I want him to keep the good work. I know they beat y'all up last night about what you're trying to do. I don't, I don't agree with it either, but that's another story. All right. But I want to commend you because you had those, uh, my Archie band for the, the senior citizen. Oh, yeah. Uh, those, or oh, Mary Archie. Those were some of the beautiful, beautiful music I ever seen. And on my TV yes, show, my TV show come on at 7.30 p.m. on, on Saturdays, Ferris Hawes Jr. Right. TV show. All and right. I'm gonna, now, this is going to be the last thing. This lady told me if I didn't sing in Spanish that the Hispanic people weren't going weren't gonna to watch my show. I said, wait a minute. I do know how to sing in Spanish. Feliz Navidad. <laughs> da, da, da. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Who's left? This, this, this table here. Yes, it is. Here you go. All right. Okay. Um, we wanted to, well, I think we agree with most of what everybody else has said. And just to underscore that we recognize the city is a very poor city and, and lots of working class people and the jobs 
that we're that are based, you know, are folks that work at hotels and the restaurants and all these places like what are they called? The ones up in 1604, uh, Fiesta Texas, and and such. And so our folks don't make money. So that we want to avoid as many t uh, increases in fees because those are regressive fees to our people who don't have that money. So a dollar cost for somebody that makes a million dollars is not the same as somebody that's on a fixed income. So, um, and what's your name? Daniel. Well, Daniel also put a lot of these, so don't just assume they're my voice, and Viola. Viola. So it says reduce economic development incentives, such as the infill center city, and again, as many people said, uh, limit tax abatements. We understand that it's about $7 million a year that we spend out on tax abatements. And that, again, some tax abatements are 10 years, some are 15 years, some are 20 years. So that's a lot of money that we could put somewhere else. Reduce or keep the same historic preservation budget. That was Viola's, Viola. If and when there are, and because I know that there are every year after we pass the budget, it seems like CPS, uh, because we have 105 degree weather, we're gonna see an increase in CPS and what they give us. And it seems that we see the increase after the budget cuts. So if there is a, in, a surplus, then we wanna make sure that we stand by our priority list um, so that the, we keep the libraries, we keep the parks. You know, If we're gonna cut them now, then let's make sure we put the money back later on when we see that CPS extra money come through. It's a, a limit executive salaries and merit increases, keep raises with, I can't understand your handwriting, with executives at same level as other city employees. Limit or reduce the police department expenditures. He said between five and 8% would make $19 million. As other people said, that meant not new cars every year or every two years. Some of us have our cars for how many years? 20, 25 years? We are always like, oh, I have 300,000 miles on my car. <laughs> Trim the fat, extra equipment, and don't pay all that extra overtime. Uh, don't increase fees to fund nice to have services, Can, which are not essential. What are, what are nice to have services, just so we're clear? Because I'm not sure we all would share the same I, opinion I of agree. what those are. <laughs> I agree, too. I, I, I think part of... Well, I, I was saying that there's some... Uh, like I think they were talking about some cultural event, some cultural centers, and uh, the, yeah, and and so um, like social, not elderly centers, but social centers that they're nice to have, but they're not essential, like police and fire. Sure. I mean, I think one of the just to speak on it a little bit, I think one of the challenges is that not only do we have different, we all have different opinions of what nice to have are, but. For example, when it comes to our delegate agencies or, or, or programming like the Book Festival, the Guadalupe, Dress for Success, the Girl Scouts, some people believe that city government should be involved in any of those things. Uh, and so there's always, that, there's always that conversation we're always having about the role of government in going, what some would argue, beyond the core services, you know, streets, sidewalks, fire, police, parks, right. and a few other things. Right. Uh, but you know, my argument with that is, is that once we start drawing some of those lines, then, you know, is it our job to bring jobs? Is it our job to bring companies here and provide 700 jobs for folks who are from the city? I mean, it's, al it's always gray. And so all the only reason I'm even talking about it is to point out that these things are not black and white, that for the most part, after you leave those four or five core city services, we're in the gray. We're in that gray area where we're trying to strike a balance between the budget reflecting our values and taking care of our folks and at the same time being responsible with uh, with our money. So I appreciate that you said it. I just wanted to clear it up to figure yeah. out what people meant. Right, but that's what I meant. And, it's always, and, it's always and I can't nebulous. stress enough that I don't want to spend more than what we're bringing in. Sure. And I don't want to increase to have more of what we'd like to have. You know, just stay within our budget like everybody else has to stay. And I definitely don't want to increase the property taxes. Not okay. at all. In fact, we, I think we pay too much. Okay. All right. Thank you. And, and I did also stress that the Historic Preservation Arts Funding for Delegate Agencies and the Convention and Visitors Bureau, they get different funding from the general fund. So although some people may want to still cut them, they come from different 
sources, and I, for one, don't want to see. We always want to cut what we see as the extra stuff, but it's what fe feeds our hearts and souls as well. And I've learned this especially from the viejitas and the viejitos of the city that really say that it's essential. Um, uh, to keep or increase, again, park infrastructure, repair, expansion. He talked about Alpine Drive. Um, again, the inner city parks that people talked about, no lights. There are a lot of places that only have uh, porta potties and not even real structures. And some young men have told me that they're so they play soccer and they don't even have places to change, so they're changing in front and the neighbors are getting upset. Um, so that, you know, and yet we spend m millions of others in parks like Harburger Park and they get both bond money and then more general funds and inner city neighborhoods have very limited stuff. Concern again, swimming pools, our communities don't have swimming pools in our backyards, some neighborhoods do, so if we want to cut the ones that have those uh, individual uh, swimming pools at home, then in the inner city neighborhoods from one through seven, I think those parks and those swimming pools should stay around a long time. As others said, keep the mo bookmobiles, Again, we saw that 33 positions were being cut from the library and 44 um, from the parks. So we were concerned about that. If, and this is again, as people said, if don't go beyond. So we're now spending more for Hemisphere Park, but we're not even able to keep the ones that we have. So why are we, it goes back to her, don't go beyond our means if we can't maintain the ones we have. Maintain programs for youth and seniors keep brush pickup, brushes bulk pickup, increase hazardous waste centers, and then additional funding for streets, sidewalks, and drainage. And, oh, well, it just was your stress of no new taxes again. Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you guys. Who's left? Here you go. We're at table one, and uh, I'm happy to be here, and I'm glad our council member is here. But uh, we started out with the reductions. We, we want to minimize the streetcar footprint. $40 million a mile of our money is going into this project. Obviously, somebody didn't do their homework, and they didn't study the same streetcar effect that Tulsa, Oklahoma has had. If you go on online, you'll see what a mess that is, and we're headed right down that same track to be derailed. We also talked about nice. re restricting or reducing tax abatements. How many times are we going to be poked, have our eyes poked out? I'll give you a good example. The Alcola Reynolds aluminum recycling plant that was on, off of, 80, of uh, Highway 87 and 410. They were given 10 year of tax abatement. They were here nine and a half. Guess what? See ya. Okay, we gotta quit doing that. We have to be smarter than people that are coming into town. And also, I feel this way. If a company wants to come to town, we shouldn't give them $1 million worth of uh, infrastructure like we did for that South Korean uh, uh, panel company that, that's gonna be coming to town. They want to come here, bring a million bucks. Put it up front as a deposit. In 10 years, you take half of it back. If you leave, we keep the whole thing. All That's right. the right. Oh, one moment, please. I'd like to mention the, the Millionaire Condo Program. Yeah. For 14 unit, uh, developments downtown, the city kicked in $35 million. That's the whole library budget. <laughs> That's what I asked. Taxpayers accommodate misdirected downtown living. It was the headline on my column of March 28th. Now, what do these condos go for? Minimum of $200 a square foot. So we're subsidizing millionaires who can afford it. They can't drive five miles to play and work downtown, no, no, no. But they can afford to pay these exorbitant prices and uh, pay a quarter of a million dollars for a 700-foot 
uh, condo and over their balconies they can watch a couple of drunks duking it out at night. Or they can watch the urban blight or some of the other things. Now, how much, how well do these condos do? Why do we even need them in the first place? Well, you talk about the Vidora. Okay, the Vidora was built in 2009. A couple of weeks after my column, they had an auction, auctioning off 30 of the properties that were unsold in four years. So the public rejected these. So even with their subsidies, no one wants to buy them, or they can't afford to buy them, whatever. They're not the only ones. These other projects they can't afford, yet the city is subsidizing them. The city is giving developers the money. You know, if they can get $250 a square foot, they probably can goose it up to $270 a square foot, rather than having housemaids and uh, fry cooks at uh, fast food uh, people doing it with their sales taxes and stuff. So again, that, that just one, that one little spiff, $35 million, and that's just the city contribution. The county is also kicking in on some of these things. That's how bad some of these abatements are. Can we get a rebate? <laughs> <laughs> you know, how would you like 10% of your property if you're buying a house? The city to pay 10% of your property. That's what we get these contracts. Um, along with the um, reduction or restriction of tax abatement, we also talked about reducing redundancy. There are too many departments doing the same thing. They should be combined or eliminated. And I'll give you another one, too. Um, along with this, every year, and I'm very compassionate. I'll give the councilman my shoes, my shirt. But I want to know why every year we keep uh, giving Haven for Hope money that could go to the senior citizens somewhere else. Okay? There is no accountability there. And we keep expanding. And it's great if it was only for the people of San Antonio. But it's not. It's everybody is coming down here. Redundancy? They, we tried to be just like San Diego, and they shut their homeless center down. I think we need to do the same thing. Okay, that, and th that was our, our three. Oh, I'm sorry, our third one is police and fire union on contracts. We need to reduce the amount that they are proposing. You know what, they're not gonna quit. Why, because they signed a contract. It says they can't quit and they can't go on strike. I know, I used to be a federal agent, and that's the same contract that they signed, I signed, okay? We can't be giving away the farm, and I, do, I know it's a dangerous and hazardous job, but we have to be frugal with our money. It's not their money, it's our money. So that's what we, we talked about. As far as priorities, no reduction to library services, in fact, we should Increase library services and or funding. We also need to increase or maintain the current level of 20 CRTs, maybe boost it up to 30. They do a job that most people will not do. And that is to see the, so the sorrow and hurt of family violence. So they need help also. So I say increase it. We don't want to be like other departments that, you know, they, they just shut off their emotions. Th these people can't. Okay, we also want to improve the quality of, of services for senior citizens. And by that, we mean we need to have a professional, licensed nutritionist go to each of the centers and look at the starches that they're feeding our senior citizens. By the way, I'm a senior citizen, and I can't afford to eat starch, okay? The same thing with uh, the uh, accessibility. There is no transportation for most seniors going into the now combined senior citizen centers. They used to be like different outposts where in the neighborhood, the seniors would all gather. They knew each other. Now they have to take two, 
sometimes three buses to get to where they're supposed to be. By the time they get there, they're worn out, especially in this heat. So we need to provide transportation services to our seniors and high quality food. I know we can do it. This is America, and this is San Antonio, and we're compassionate. Okay. We also need to uh, increase our enforcement at animal care services. These poor guys, and I've, I've got to tell you, I've called them six times in one day, waiting for them to come there, but I understand why. They're stretched so thin. We need to increase their funding and also enforce the people, the owners, that, that have these pets that run wild. Okay, and last but not least, along with that, we want to double the brush and bulk item pickups. It's killing us, Councilman. It, it is, especially you know where I live. Okay. Now, are you saying, just on the last part, are you saying because people have items in the front of their house for too long? Or what, what about it isn't sufficient now? Help me understand that. Once a, Once a year, it's correct. Okay. What people are going to do as human beings, uh, I'm a landlord, and what they'll do is uh -oh. uh, dump the stuff uh, on um, it's twice vacant a year. properties. It, it is twice a year. Last year, you actually increased it in 2012, so it's rolled up to twice a year. So you okay. twice the two bulbs a year, and you get two brush pickup. We circle the city four times a year. So, so we're saying that you want to Every three months, we're House. And we alternate it so that you'll have brush one three months, and the next three months is bulk. So they're six months apart, but they're alternated. We're in front of your house every three months. It's four times a year. Okay, I thought that was one piece. Twice a piece is good. Okay, I, mean, I want to make sure. And well, I, I heard what you said, and I listened real good. However, Mr. Bernal, I got to tell you, at my house, I'm lucky if they come by once a year. And I'll tell you why. Oh, well, we can't get in there. So they keep on going. And I have to call them. We also have to call them on our truck so we can show you where we passed your house in making certain that we do come four times a year. I'd like to see that. Well, look, you guys can, you yeah. guys can hang out after this. Okay. Also, one last item I forgot to mention about the senior citizens. You know, we are renting, are renting the, the properties. Why can't we buy them and make them permanent senior well, citizens? Well, we are. And here's, I appreciate that. Let me close up All right, and, go and, ahead. Talk, and talk about a couple of things. You know, my job is to listen to you guys, but I, I also want to share with you some of my priorities just starting off before this process, the things that I'm interested in doing just off the bat. Um, what's tough about some of this is that some of these are, are conflicting. In, 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 in this instance, you're asking for an increase from two to three or more. Other folks are saying it should drop down to one. Um, you're asking about buying vacant properties and redeveloping them for single family. A lot of other people are saying to cut infill development, and that's what that is. So you can see that part of our job is difficult because we're getting a variety, of, a sort of broad range, range of suggestions that are tough. But just starting off for us in our office, you know, we, we care very much about the CRT positions. Um, for those of you who haven't heard, those are essentially social worker type civilian employees who work with SAPD, and if I get it wrong, let me know. And they focus almost exclusively on uh, battered women and domestic violence issues. If you've ever, ever gone on a ride, along, a ride along with SAPD, you'll note that a tremendous amount of their time is spent responding to domestic violence issues and family violence issues. And so, um, right now we're at 20, there's a, there's a suggestion to go to 10. I think there's pretty much unanimous support in the council to get back up to 20 uh, one way or another, and I know it's, it's not easy. Um, we also have maintained the level of street and sidewalk uh, repair and installation as we did last year. One thing that I'm especially uh, happy about and proud of is that uh, my staff and I passed an ordinance uh, early on which was to prioritize the installation of sidewalks are around schools that didn't have them. Uh, you know, I know that sidewalks can become a very political thing. You want a sidewalk in front of your home, you've been asking for 40 years. You want a sidewalk in front of your home, you've been asking for 30 years. I have only so much money to do it. 
Um, but I think we can all agree that if we find schools, especially elementary schools around the city, not just in our district, that don't have sidewalks, we can all agree that that's a place where we can agree that they should go first. And so it depoliticizes the whole thing. So a big part of our street and sidewalk program includes nearly $5 million to pilot a, a sidewalks around schools program. So that's us spending our money in a way that we believe is needed most. Um, and then of course, beyond that, we're committed to maintain, maintaining levels uh, as they were in the past, but things do get more expensive. Uh, I agree on the library hours issue. I agree on the pool issues. Everything else, of course, gets great. But that's sort of our, from our office, that's our starting point, and then we're going to take all the things that we've heard you guys say and around the city and incorporate them. On uh, August 28th, there'll be another one of these. It's a citywide uh, presentation, and then there'll be another one on September 4th. And so that's at the City Hall Chambers uh, 114 West Commerce at 6 o'clock. Yes. Yes. It's at the same time as Citizens to be Heard, which on September 4th is going to be interesting. Um, but that being said, are there any more questions or comments? Yes, Mr. Finger. That's right. That's right. right. So to, to clarify what Jack is saying, that at 6 o'clock is when you'll have the budget presentations, and then Citizens to be Heard will happen after that. Um, anybody else? Ferris, yes. Let me respond to that. Uh, you're talking about sidewalks between 410 and Oblate on McCullough, and I, can, and I can tell you that for our district, the two schools that are part of the pilot the first year of sidewalks around schools is Neal Elementary, if you guys don't know where that is. That's on Blanco and Bassey. There's a bunch of churches along Bassey. About two blocks in is a, is a little inner city pocket uh, where there's an elementary school, and they're getting sidewalks, and Ridgeview Elementary, which is on McCullough between Fortin and Oblate. So we'll see how that goes. Um, thank you guys so much for your time. Thank you for your attention. We really appreciate it. Please believe me and trust me that this is not an exercise in futility. We are taking all of your comments and taking them seriously. Uh, we'll see you at the next one. Thank you very much.